but they have to consult with whoever is in that area. And if the thing is, is in any way really affecting other areas, they have to have consult with the other managers in those areas. And that's almost every area. If you're going to do something, it's going to impact yeah. some yeah. other area. Yeah. But we're small enough, you know, and we live together, which makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so we keep, there's always this consulting that's going on. And then if there's some really big money item that comes up, that's got to come to the larger group mm -hmm. for consultation. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes in some big issues, not oftentimes, but several times in some big issues, there was uh, a real a real conflict in terms of where everybody wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And the manager stepped in and said, okay, I've consulted enough, this is the decision. Yeah. And uh, okay, cool, let's move on. Yeah. Otherwise you're paralyzed. Yeah. And that's what happens in lots and lots of uh, organizational structures. You get, everything gets paralyzed. Yeah, and that's, and that's something that holacracy has intentionally... Um, the sort of overarching goal of holacracy is to relieve tensions. Because tensions is the, the, is the space between what is and what could be, mm -hmm. right? And so it's somebody wanting to do something and moving forward. So like I said, with the Worker Co-op Academy, if I started moving forward and then I... When then in the next meeting brought it up to say, I've started moving forward on building this worker co-op academy and somebody had a, had concern about it, there's an explicit process, a meeting process within Holacracy to relieve that tension. Right. And so the whole organizational model is, is meant to relieve that tension, to allow people at least to go incrementally forward with, with what they want to do. Okay. So, yeah. And this requires cooperation. Yeah. I mean, if people aren't really disposed to cooperation, it ain't going to work that well. Yeah, yeah. So, let's start with your with, with the cooperative uh, academy. Mm -hmm. What is to describe the program and and describe what you, it it ran for one year already? Is this your? Yeah, yeah. And then and what the outcome has been and, yeah. and what Zoe's uh, pro, uh, work is going to do? Yeah. So um, the uh, Worker Co-op Academy was started by um, the Sustainable Economies Law Center. Project Equity, which is um, a uh, business consulting nonprofit firm for worker cooperatives, mm -hmm. um, headed up by uh, Hilary Bell, who was the executive direct director at Wages for eight years, um, and Allison Lingay, and um, a third organization, uh, the East Bay Community Law Center, uh, and specifically. Wow. Yeah, so those, <laughs> <laughs> um, Sushil Jacob at uh, EBCLC. So our three organizations came together because we saw the need um, for a longer-term sustained education and training program for worker cooperatives. Um, longer term is yeah. So is what? Uh, it's a 12-week program. That was the first version of it. So we had the pilot program last fall. Um, it was 12 weeks, and we had uh, seven teams participate. And so it was a team academy. It's not individual entrepreneurs who want to start up a co-op, and that okay. we do a matchmaking. It's pre-selected, self-selected teams who are either um, startups or converters or they're nonprofits, and they want to incorporate worker cooperatives into mm -hmm. their workforce development programming. So we had um, we had one startup come in who it was a worker owned farm that's starting up. Um, we had a, an existing cooperative that was going through a transition. They really wanted to strengthen their internal culture and internal structures. Um, we had uh, what is it? We had nonprofits coming in who wanted to do uh, worker cooperative development, and so it was interesting because it was a pilot pilot program. We had these different. Uh, you know, people with different, oh, and sorry, and conversions. Conversion. So, yeah, which is okay. a huge, um, huge uh, move. Part of the movement now is really looking right. at right. Um, how we can take these businesses with baby boomers all retiring. How can we get them to sell to their employees and convert to cooperatives? So um, we had a, a couple businesses come through that were doing just that. They were looking at um, the longer term vision of what they wanted to do with their business as a succession plan to sell to their employees and, and to become cooperatives themselves. And then there's a lot, lot, it would seem that there's a lot of cross-fertilization going yeah, on. Yeah, and that's... A conversion is coming from one perspective yeah. and and, and uh, an organization wants to come in in order to strengthen their internal stuff. Mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of exchange that's that yeah. uh, very very uh, interesting and exciting, or even conflicting. I can imagine. Yeah. Why are you guys trying <laughs> to do that? That doesn't make. It. Yeah, yeah, and that's a. It was really that was part of our hope um, and intention was that we weren't the uh, necessarily the experts in every field coming in and bestowing this information. That it was really the the wisdom was already there in the room, and what we were trying to do was guide that conversation, oh. provide the the resources to them. But really, yeah, there was a lot of this cross-pollination. People who had been business owners for years and years and years mm -hmm. were giving business advice to the startups and to the, the existing cooperatives. And, and those, or, those people from those organizations have a lot of experience in collective management and cooperative culture and those types of things. And they were sharing their experience. How do you start to build that process into your business? And so there was a lot of cross-fertilization, which is – and community building. So now there's a community of practice mm -hmm. practitioners – um, who have graduated from the Worker Co-op Academy. So, yeah. I, 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 I want to get into the, um, to the specifics of what you focused on and mm -hmm. a lot of that. But first, the thing, one of the things that's, that's ringing uh, uh, in, in my little brain is that there is a resonance mm -hmm. between the overall structure of SELC mm -hmm. with your distributed authority structure and and I assume there's a lot of work in facilitating the culture to you know to make that work mm -hmm. and the fact that you're into cooperative education it means that it, you are, have a larger culture in which this is taking place the resonance between the organization delivering the service mm -hmm. and the purpose of the of the program because in a lot of places you've got very hierarchical structures mm -hmm. that are yeah. trying to do that yeah, yeah. and they bring the, which is the overall struggle that we got is that we're all grown up yeah. with the hierarchical yeah. stuff, yeah. and we're trying to you know move out of it, yeah. and we keep bringing it with us, yeah. and we have to you know the the processes for being able to to move is step by step from from the one to the other paradigm. Yeah, and there's a lot of unlearning that needs to happen when right. you're you know when you're coming into or trying to build a cooperative culture, and um, yeah. Not, the cooperative education pieces, training around uh, worker cooperatives and that type of thing, it's not um, cooperative education, which you know can be confusing when people talk about it. Uh, you know, a, a pedag pedagogical you know way of mm -hmm. of teaching. So I'd like to incorporate more popular education and cooperative education into our training around worker cooperatives. But um, you know, it's this evolutionary process where we're trying right. to build right. those resources. So. Yeah. Okay. So what what were the focuses of your first year? I mean, yeah. what were you the learning objectives? I guess it would be a, a better way to, to to ask the question. Yeah. So um, we had um, workshops on people and culture. So how do you how do you take cooperative principles and and well and that was another area was cooperative is cooperativism the history of cooperatives and the principles and those types right. of things um, and then. Uh, people and culture. So, how do you operationalize those into your into your workplace? How do you actually um, create systems of accountability, of responsibility, of um, leader, of allowing for leadership and growth um, using the, the cooperative principles as a framework? And so, we had um, classes on people and culture, um, leadership and management, um, trying to really uh, look at businesses and look at leadership development is not a nasty thing you know having leaders is not being a um, antithetical to cooperatives and so um, so we talked about power and distributed authority and how do you how do you do that um, we talked about the legal um, aspects so if you, uh, what legal entity to incorporate or uh, how does employment law affect a worker cooperative and um, and those types of and also financing mm -hmm. and, and legal aspects like that um, and then we had some uh, basic business classes. So, you know, uh, looking at who's your, who your clientele, marketing, and those types of things. But um, we didn't have on our team the expertise to provide uh, those trainings. So we worked with local um, business accelerator programs to bring those expertise into the, into the academy. So and, you, you were drawing upon operating pro projects mm -hmm. outside yeah. Throughout the throughout the Bay Area, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's something that we hope to um, build upon, and not only have just a couple uh, facilitators come in and provide one workshop on 
ba um, business basics and one workshop on access to finance, but really have a parallel um, academy sort of based off of the model that the Green Worker Cooperative um, Academy in the Bronx has where they have um, the academy that they run and facilitate, which is around governance and management, leadership, people and culture, those types of things. And then they have a partnership with a business accelerator program that is having um, a business academy themselves that focuses on um, finding your market, finding your product, you know, um, okay. all those types of things. So hopefully we'll have something like that, a parallel program where the teams that come into the academy will participate in both so that at the end there's really that um, robust um, education and support that they've had. And something that we did with our academy that other academies around the country haven't done is ongoing support services after the academy finished. Okay. So, um, so what happened was we had seven teams come through, and out of those seven teams, they all applied at the end of um, the academy for legal representation and for individual business consultations.